our next speaker, Dr. Salah Ashurafa. Dr. Salah is a senior consultant, pediatrician, and pediatric nephrologist. He is the head of pediatric nephrology, Katif Central Hospital, Saudi Arabia. He is the president of Shams Society. Uh, he will speak about Shams guidelines in children. In Shams, we are very abroad. We are throwing lines about the hypertension in children. And you know, primary hypertension now is shifted back to the age of children as well. Dr. Saleh. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, thank the organizing committee and scientific committee for giving us uh, this chance to talk about pediatrics. Actually, when we start in 2001, there was a question whether hypertension is present in pediatrics or not. And now, I was given the chance to talk about hypertension in children and adolescent Saudi guidelines. So there is a shift in the uh, approach of uh, Thank you. Um, so uh, you see, and now, today, even we talk about neonatal hypertension. I don't know, Dr. Wissam, maybe later we'll talk about fetal hypertension, I don't know. Uh, actually, hypertension in children is a growing epidemic, and unfortunately, high blood pressure is estimated to be prevalent in 4.5% in many studies. In our country, we don't have, uh, you know, a big, bold study, but we have a small, uh, you know, uh, prevalence in, in a small population. I will, I'm going to show you. And a recent study in uh, 2017, October, uh, you know, the, uh, it shows that 75% uh, of uh, children failed to be diagnosed. So still we are so primitive. The clinical perspective on blood pressure has changed in recent years, and blood pressure measure regularly and improved knowledge and distribution of blood pressure values during growth. So I was asked to talk about our guideline, although we are just uh, starting. So we formed a subcommittee. We were with adults together forming the society. So a subcommittee, uh, you know, charged with developing and updated evidence-based clinical practice uh, guideline. So we provide recommendation on diagnosis, evaluation, and management of, of childhood uh, hypertension. And the aim was for practicing clinician in outpatient and inpatient. So we will start as usual with definition and I mean to put it because there is a big confusion in the terminology. We have polyterminology in different uh, guidelines. In American, for example, uh, they change from prehypertension to high normal, European elevated, and in ours, still we are putting pre-hypertension. So I'm going just to, uh, you know, go over it. The normal is below 90th percentile in all guidelines and in recent Canadian guidelines, which, which has just appeared. In uh, pre-hypertension, they call it high normal in uh, US guidelines, elevated in European and all the same definition between 90th to less than 95th percentile, European the same, Americans are the same. Stage one and two, we are all the same, uh, except that uh, Americans, they change the word stage one to grade one. So it, all above 95th percentile, we call it hypertension. 
and stage two, uh, we are all the same, but we and European 99th plus five, the American, they shift 99th plus 12 millimeter. So it is really complex, complex. Uh, you know, we have to have centiles, etc. Nobody can, uh, you know, memorize what is the specific blood pressure in that specific child, that specific height. And so blood pressure in children is a function of age and sex and height percentile. So what is normal for one child may be considered hypertensive in another child. Clinician usually cannot remember normal blood pressure for a wide range of children observed in their typical primary care setting. There are multiple, uh, you know, uh, reference data. And the most famous is American and uh, European. There are data for sculptatory and now data for oscillometric. But there is a weakness in all current definitions. It's built as statistical. It's not built on end target damage. This is a weakness. And most of the task force data is built on single blood pressure measurement. We uh, see that our population is really different from uh, other parts of the world. So uh, Professor Abdullah Saloum conducted uh, excellent uh, study. It's all in 2009, but it's really excellent on 17,800 children uh, nationwide. And his conclusion was blood pressure value in this study differed from those from other studies in developing countries and in the United States. This is how he compared, indicating that comparison across studies is difficult. And from that, every population should use their own normal standard to define, you know, blood pressure definitions. After that, this is what appeared in Saudi Arabia. This is poor Saudi children. And that's what we should uh, use now. And you are seeing the left girls, the red boys are blue. And as you all see, it's increasing with age. This is very simplified with age. And that's why we should use standard normograms. Primary care uh, physicians, family physicians, pediatricians are very aware of how to use centiles so it's easy for them. Or they can use table. So if we have, for example, 12-year-old child whose height is on 75th percentile and his blood pressure is 105 systolic, he would be considered normal. But if he is on 5th percentile, the same child, if his blood pressure value is 103, he is hypertensive. So that's why we have to go on tables and centiles to define the hypertension. And that's the major difference between uh, pediatric hypertension and adult hypertension. For the sake of the time, I will skip some of uh, the slides. Upon the uh, Saudi centiles, we uh, you know, uh, conduct a campaign to see uh, how prevalent is the hypertension in our uh, population. So we did the campaign. Uh, we studied 2,693 children, and we found 417 to be hypertensive, which is constitute of around 15%. And then we go for a second, in these same patients, we asked them, but only 253 children came, so 8% only. That reflect that one measurement is not really good. So we went ahead and do the third measurement and only 6%. That 6%, whether we consider them hypertensive or not, I really don't know because white coat hypertension, the kids are afraid from doctors, so we are not so sure that 6% of our population are hypertensive. If we take this value as other values in US and Europe, that is big alarm to our society. 6% of our kids are hypertensive. 
So we went ahead and uh, did the ambulatory I'm going to show you later on. So why this race? We have epidemics of obesity, 15% of As our kids are you obese. Have 10 minutes. Huh? 10 minutes more. 10 minutes more. Yeah. Not 10 hours? No, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Ten, okay. 10, day, 10 days. Okay, okay. And we have a sedentary lifestyle. Epidemiological studies indicate 30% of obese kids are hypertensive. And I guess the hypertension, 6%, are majority of them are obese. In next conference, I will show you the obesity, the weight versus height versus the blood pressure. It's a promise. In these cases, the same cases, I am following them. So hypertension and obesity are two common preventable disorders, and we need more studies. So fast food commonly contains unhealthy amount of sodium, and uh, Saudi FDA now uh, already put a rule that they have to reduce 30% of the salt, which I really congratulate them, and maybe that would affect the uh, prevalence of hypertension in the kids. Evidence from epidemiological studies and experimental trials in animal and human suggest that added sugars, particularly fructose, may increase blood pressure and blood pressure variability if you do ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. Increase prevalence of prematurity, survivors due to recent advances in prenatology lead to increase in prevalence of hypertension, unfortunately. So are we uh, there? You know, as I told you, there is a lot of mess. We don't diagnose hypertension in children. And this is a study of 14,000 kids. 0.9 of them had a diagnosis of hypertension only, which is, uh, you know, I don't know, this is screened in all uh, United States. So when they go with the criteria, 3.6% of them are hypertensive. So only one out of four with hypertension were identified in the medical record as having hypertension. And I guess we are the same. This is a different uh, guideline. So we shifted from the question whether we should include pediatric hypertension to include in our guidelines. And I think we might be uh, one of the first societies that include uh, pediatric hypertension since 2004. And now, like Canadians, uh, only on October 2017, they publish their first guidelines. So we are in the front line, alhamdulillah. So we have different uh, guidelines. You can uh, take it. And there is chapter 26 for uh, hypertension in pediatrics. Now diagnosis, there is a shift in paradigm in how you diagnose hypertension. Is it based on uh, just uh, clinic visits or ambulatory blood pressure in our proposed message in the guideline, instead of going to comprehensive investigation, we should go for ambulatory blood pressure monitoring to see whether they are really hypertensive or not, because it is very costly investigations in pediatrics looking for secondary hypertension. Unfortunately, yet, we don't have our own centiles. We have to use centiles, and these uh, centiles are almost similar to the height and weight of uh, our kids. That's why I put it for you. So we went ahead in the screening in those six persons of kids, and we did ambulatory blood pressure. We finished it. Only three percent of them, they are hypertensive. So we have to be very careful not to over-treat and not to over-investigate. This is how ambulatory blood pressure monitoring in normal green, and you see uh, the reverse nocturnal hypertension suggestive of, you know, uh, secondary hypertension or increased morning surge suggestive of, uh, you know, uh, vasculitis pro process. So 
That will guide you how you investigate uh, your kid. And this is how we uh, classify uh, hypertension based on 95th uh, percentile as a cut-off point. So if they have below 95th percentile in clinic and ambulatory, this is normal tension. If they are in five the clinic minute, hypertensive, five well, minute lifts. don't worry, I will make it. Thank I you. have a very clear message. Thank you. And I hope the message will be delivered clearly because I think it's very important for our uh, physicians practicing uh, pediatrics. So white coat hypertension is uh, the clinic visit is high and the, uh, you know, ambulatory is normal. This is called white coat hypertension in adult and pediatrics. Mast, if they are, uh, you know, having normal clinic, blood pressure but high ambulatory blood pressure, we call it masked hypertension, and that reflects on end organ damage, so we have to be very careful, especially for those having, uh, you know, uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, congenital heart diseases, etc. Sustained if both are, are high. And this is how we classify and how we treat the ambulatory blood pressure. So, and this is uh, just sake of uh, comparison between ambulatory blood pressure and the clinic blood pressure and home blood pressure monitoring, which I yet don't recommend uh, home blood pressure devices, mainly because there are no cuff sizes and they are not validated for pediatric use, but we might use them in, uh, in adolescent uh, period like uh, adults. I concentrated on definition. This is how it looks for one child. And the obesity, as you see all, the more obese is more prevalent uh, hypertension. And how we evaluate if we diagnose hypertension, we have to determine underlying cause. We have to assess for comorbidities. So by going to patient and family history, physical exam, and laboratory imaging studies, I will skip uh, laboratory, but these are from hypertensive kids visiting our clinic. End organ damage, whether it's present or not, to, to, to have it very evident, it needs long time to develop. But if you look for it, you will find it. So e evaluation of organ damage is, uh, you know, commonly we look for left ventricular hypertrophy, and this is the most predominant. In our hypertensive kids, unfortunately, we have around 36% of our kids having left ventricular hypertrophy, which is really bad. So ECHO is a must. And this is one of the studies published in January 2017 indicating uh, the same. This is how the effect more systolic, more left ventricular hypertrophy, as you see in, in adults. And this is from one of the kids with, uh, you know, intimal uh, thickness, which is very clear, very evident, and there is a correlation, very well uh, correlated. So overall treatment goal is to achieve blood pressure level that reduce the risk of target organ damage to reduce risk for hypertension-related cardiovascular disease in adulthood. And our aim is really to achieve optimal blood pressure, which is below 90th percentile. This is how we manage. Normal, we just encourage healthy lifestyle, pre-hypertension or whatever the name you see it. We uh, try to reduce the weight and we recheck in six months and we introduce physical activity and diet management. And in stage one, we don't treat, we encourage a healthy lifestyle, but if no control, by six months to one year, we have to go to medication. And in stage two, we go for medication in the same time with a healthy lifestyle. This is one of the obese kids who gave me a headache, and he is the only child who did bariatric surgery because he is obese to control his blood pressure because the moment he reduces his weight, his blood pressure will go down and if he increases weight, he will be hypertensive and he had 
very severe left ventricular hypertrophy, so he had bariatric surgery and now he is normotensive. Smoking is bad, especially in adolescent, and it's increasing, unfortunately, which causes a lot of blood pressure variability in ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. This is one of the obese who was just controlled by uh, reducing the weight, and he had, uh, you name it, a lot of investigations in different center, and when he was referred to us, we just controlled his weight. He is normotensive now. So the target we should achieve is blood pressure is below 90 for age, sex, and height. In a chronic kidney disease, we do like you, we follow you in adults. We are your kids. So, but we take centiles, less than 75th centile in children without proteinuria or less than 50th percentile if they have CKD with proteinuria. 24 hours ambulatory blood pressure is strongly recommended and this is how we uh, manage the ambulatory blood pressure. I will not go into uh, details. The medications, you know, you have to be very careful. You see that a small kid referred to me. You see how is he is a lot of hair, and uh, unfortunately, because they could not control his blood pressure by minoxidil, and when we control his uh, healthy lifestyle, it was very easy to, to manage. You can use any of these. The dotted line, preferable not to combine these uh, lines, continuous line, you can combine. I'm not going to go in detail for doses and how you manage because you can find it in chapter 26, uh, page 62 in our guideline. Uh, in conclusion, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the detection and treatment of hypertension is important to prevent long-term cerebrovascular and cardiovascular complications. Aggressive attempt to identify and treat hypertension must be balanced carefully with the risk of overdiagnosis and overtreatment in these patients. In the last 30 years, non-invasive uh, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring has emerged and has very valuable uh, to our diagnosis. Clinicians should become familiar with uh, ABBM to provide additional guidance, or you can refer it to center equipped with this and compared with casual blood pressure measurement ABBM has proved superior in predicting either target organ damage or uh, morbid events. This is from uh, our first course, whom we graduated uh, the trainees for blood pressure measurement, and these are the ones who delivered workshops yesterday in this uh, conference and who conducted the organizing uh, things and material. Mm -hmm. And I would like to thank them and congratulate them. They are the success of this uh, symposium. I thank them very much. <clears throat> thank you very much.